propelled by bicycle pedals. It's a momentous occasion. All aviation stops to watch. As you could probably guess from that short intro clip I threw together, this video is about tackling ray tracing. But actually, it's not about specifically ray tracing itself. Ray tracing is the future. It will be the standard probably 10 years from now. And until then, it's going to be nothing but a new bolted-on gimmick, just like occlusion, tessellation, all these other effects that we keep throwing into rasterized games. Until you can fully ray trace, until, as Jensen said, it just works, which it doesn't right now, ray tracing is a gimmick. But it could be a cool gimmick, just not on Turing. And that's what this subject is about, the fallacy of future-proofing through Turing ray tracing. And it is just Turing. Now, recently, I've talked about this in almost all recent Broken Silicon episodes, my loose ends, but, you know, those are two to three hours long, and they tend to pepper my supporting arguments throughout the episode. So why not put it all together in one video, this video? And in fact, let's start with the analogy I want to run with for the theme of this subject, and that was an analogy made in the recent podcast with Cortex. Yeah, it makes no sense. Like, it's the same as a good analogy would be, let's say that a company comes out with a car and they put wings on that car. And when you drive off a cliff, you actually float for about five seconds. You still smash the car. But then you, 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 another car comes out and the reviewer says, well, this car doesn't have wings and wings are the future. Even though they don't work right now, they're the future. So I'm going to give this car a bad review because it doesn't have wings. I really couldn't have said it better myself. The analogy that he made that I think is perfect is that Turing RTX is like buying a flying car that can only fly for five seconds. And most importantly, when you would want it to fly, again, perhaps to save you from going off a cliff, it's still going to kill you. You're still going to die. And so when I hear, for instance, from Digital Foundry, the world of 3D rendering is moving on and NVIDIA is ready. Yeah, NVIDIA is ready to crash into a crater in 2020. But let's break down just why Turing ray tracing is that analogy. Um, an early experimental flying car that can't even really fly. Well, here's the thing. If you buy Turing for RTX, it's really doomed to have a short shelf life for two reasons. The first reason was touched on by Hardware Unboxed in his early ray tracing coverage, where he found, you know, uh, Tim and Steve found that when you run a 2080 Ti or any Turing card with ray tracing on, it actually uses less energy most of the time than when you don't have it on. How can that be? It's getting such horrible frame rates. Shouldn't it be chugging and heating up your house? Well, no, because it is so horribly balanced that the CUDA cores are stalling while the RT cores are bogged down. It actually uses less energy. And this is an ideal situation. So my point here with number one is that even in an ideal world, even using NVIDIA's, you know, paid-for dev support exactly how they want to use it, it still doesn't work in any realistic, usable way. That's not going to get better. That's not going to get better at all. Even in ideal conditions with games that are recent, I mean, with games that are now a year or two old, this thing can barely run. That Yeah, that situation isn't getting better. It's only going to get worse. And most importantly, though, is point number two. The next-gen consoles are going to do ray tracing, and they're going to do it with powerful new hardware. Hardware that is different from what Turing uses. And not just different, but just straight up better, to the point that devs do not want to bother supporting Turing unless they are paid for every hour of work they put into it. In this interview here with a Gears 5 dev, he literally goes as far as to say that they're very excited for next-gen ray tracing. Directly 
calling NVIDIA's ray tracing last gen before the next gen consoles are even out. And it's because it's hardware accelerated for the first time ever. And what's funny is the writers of this PC gaming article have this issue where they're like, well, we've had dedicated hardware before, but the fact is, no, you don't. You really don't. The way Turing does ray tracing isn't dedicated in the way you would want it to be to get the performance needed to push ray tracing to actually be a usable gimmick. And this is something I really need to drill down into with point number two. It's not just that the consoles are going to use different ray tracing, right? Making NVIDIA using some forlorn, abandoned, outdated standard no one else is using. No, it's worse, though, because it's using an entirely inferior method of ray tracing that's lower quality and doesn't give enough performance. You, you know, here's the thing, guys. To be honest, most of my industry contacts are actually server people and console hardware people. In fact, the Zen 3 leak that I got out, as far as I'm aware, before anyone else, I got that from talks with someone who works at Microsoft who was considering Zen 3 for the Xbox 2. That's where I found out about Zen 3. And so when I tell you, both the PS5 and the Xbox 2 are going to have vastly superior, vastly superior ray tracing hardware to what's in Turing. I'm not screwing around. I'm not jerking your chain. I'm telling you why. Why would you buy some experimental car that uses a steam engine when the Model T that uses gas is right around the corner? I mean, it probably won't be perfect in the PS5, but it's going to be light years more performant than what's in Turing. And it will also be the standard. That's why, that's point number two. That's why Turing is really screwing you over from two sides. It's a double bad investment for future proofing. In its ideal con conditions, it's inadequate. And it's not going to be ideal conditions soon. Soon, there will be gas cars with turbos competing against steam engine Turing, to continue the car analogies. What's going on right now isn't just the start of Turing's ray tracing relevance. It's the peak. This is the best it's going to get, guys. And in fact, there's actually a third point I want to make to really hit home everything I'm talking about. You know, the first two points are the most important. Point number one being, you know, even in ideal situations, Turing RTX is woefully under-equipped to handle what it says it can do. It just can't do it. And then more importantly, point number two is that the stuff coming in the next-gen consoles and RDNA 2.0 is substantially better at ray tracing and will be the standard Turing RTX is going to be the forgotten stepchild that was never really able to do what it said it could do. But point number three is what I call the punchline. Now, it's not necessarily 100% that what I'm about to say is what's going to happen, but the fact is this is quite possible. What's possible is that long-term, Vega and even RDNA 1.0 could end up getting better ray tracing support in like 2020 2021 than turing gets and yeah i know you think i'm crazy for suggesting this but let me break it down the fact is we have already seen demos where non turing rtx cards run ray tracing and they don't just run it they run it pretty god damn well in this video here we can see a vega 56 and they're going for like 200 to 250 right now is ray tracing roughly as well as an rtx 2060 or 2070 that costs substantially more and these are older cards on a outdated process and yet they're running it as well as a 2060 and how are they doing that well it's through brute force. Vega has forward thinking and planning asynchronous compute and FP16 capabilities. And if you leverage these capabilities, you can brute force ray tracing fine. 
And the fact is, the Quake 2 demo for NVIDIA doesn't even use RTX. It doesn't. And, in fact, the Minecraft ray tracing demo can be run on an RX 5700 XT or an RX 580 UFD Tech has a great video here, links in the description, where he shows a 5700 XT running Minecraft 60% as well as a 2080 Super. That's a card with, you know, over double the die size with supposedly dedicated hardware. But the fact is, a lot of RTX games don't use all of the hardware. And even the RX 580 can run it half as well as the 5700 XT, so like a fourth as well as a 2080 Super for what, right? Like a fifth the cost. There's a mountain of evidence that you can run RTX maybe not quite as well as Tensor and RT cores can in Turing, but you can run them pretty goddamn close. Pretty close. The way RDNA 2.0, which will be in, I believe, the... 50, at least the 5900 XT and in the next gen consoles is it has a hardware accelerator that leverages the existing performance of FP16 asynchronous compute units, the brute force compute power of our DNA and accelerates it to do ray tracing far better than RDNA 1.0 can do. However, RDNA 1.0 and Vega both have very powerful FP16 and asynchronous compute performance and so that's really half of the equation so it would be very easy to have backwards compatibility although probably you know a fourth a tenth of the performance on vega on rdna 1.0 that rdna 2.0 gets this is an important distinction because devs can easily program and allow previous gcn architectures to run ray tracing without all of the work that will be required using nvidia's exotic solution and it may not be exotic now, but it will be exotic. The consoles will be the standards. Devs will partner with AMD for that. And so there is a situation where uh, long term, I could see Radeon 7 ray tracing better than, a, I don't know, a 2080. And I don't, I'm not saying that will happen, but I feel like there's a good argument for that. And in fact, this is important because the PS4 Pro has FP16 and actually very powerful asynchronous compute capabilities. It's kind of almost a Vega architecture. So when cross-gen games come out in 2020, devs could put a ray tracing mode on PS4 Pro without that much effort. It would be pretty easy. And yeah, it wouldn't run above 30 frames, that's for sure. But they could do it. They could put a low ray tracing. This is important. This is the punchline that despite the dedicated hardware in NVIDIA's graphics cards, it's not used in half of the demos out now, like Quake 2, like Minecraft. And in fact, it's arguably not really much better than what's in Vega and RDNA 1.0 if devs actually put forth the effort to add ray tracing. They just haven't. This is an NVIDIA marketing gimmick. Oh, and guess who also just woke up? Intel, a company 10 times bigger than NVIDIA. And they're pulling a USB, an open standard. They are pushing for more and more games that use DirectX 11 or DirectX 12 to have all DirectX 11 cards be able to use ray tracing. And that means AMD cards. That's right. Intel understands that there's no point in pushing these closed standards for gimmicks. Anyone using AMD or even older NVIDIA cards can soon use ray tracing in World of Tanks, and they plan on working on this type of support in other games. Ray tracing is not some NVIDIA innovation, people. It's been around forever. They had demos of it working on a PlayStation 3, for Christ's sakes. This is an NVIDIA gimmick, and anyone who bought into it, I'm sorry, you were just duped. And if you were duped by NVIDIA, I don't know, right? Uh, hopefully, at least, you have a lot of spare change. If you bought an RTX card early, you must, I hope. And uh, you'll just take solace in the fact that you had a cool toy and you got to try out demos before other people. But that's all 
Turing, and I say Turing, not NVIDIA. Turing ray tracing is useful for. It's not going to be the standard. You know, let's summarize the points then. Number one, it uses a type of architecture that requires a ton of optimizations right now from devs, and NVIDIA has to pay them for every hour of work they put in. This is the best it's going to get. As more competing ray tracing standards and the consoles come out, it is not going to get more support. It's going to get less. It might even get less support or the same amount of support as Pascal eventually, in that it won't really run it well at all. And that's because, number two, Turing RTX is a steam engine to the next-gen consoles and RDNA 2.0's gas engine and the gas engine of a model t the standard the default what everyone will program around it's not just that it's worse than what the consoles will use or that it's that the consoles will be the standard it's actually both and number three the punchline is that could mean vega and rdna 1.0 getting as good if not better ray tracing support in about a year from now and the final thing to bring up is that intel's on amd or should i say radeon side on this they are pushing for open DirectX ray tracing standards that their cards can use and AMD's cards. So they just want to be able to use ray tracing. And don't doubt it, Intel is 10 times bigger than NVIDIA, has a war chest of money. If they want good ray tracing support, they will get it. And so think about it. When you have devs with Intel pushing you at every minute to get good ray tracing support, and then you have the consoles with AMD as the standard, NVIDIA is the ugly stepchild. Right now is not the start of NVIDIA ray tracing, it's the peak. And a year and a half from now, it will be the end. I'm sure, don't worry. I'm sure NVIDIA will have some 7 nanometer ray tracing thing out. And they'll say it's 10 times better at ray tracing. Oh, we did it again. 10 times more performance. And all you people got suckered again. Who bought Turing for future proofing. But, you know, what really annoys me at the end of the day is how will, woefully moronic some of these tech websites are spreading false information like digital foundry saying ridiculous things like ray tracing is about to be the standard because of the consoles and then forgetting that the consoles will have different hardware thus not making it harder for nvidia to get support but guaranteeing turing rtx will get worse support than basic amd cards it's pathetic and 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 it's sloppy and frankly lazy and possibly paid off journalism. And so that's why I made this video. I've talked about it a million times, but I had to break it down. I had to break down why, and I say Turing, not NVIDIA, Turing ray tracing has, is on borrowed time. It is the peak now, not the start. <sighs> but I tell you what, I'm pretty tired of talking about ray tracing. And that's the last thing I want to be clear about. I don't really like it. <laughs> I don't like it in AMD. I don't like it in Intel. I think it's a waste of our time until we can run games at 8K, at least 120 hertz, you know, an HDR 10. You know, that's with perfect effects that aren't watered down. That's when ray tracing is worth adding on top, and it would look brilliant. It would look photorealistic. But we can't. And so I hate this focus. But, you know, maybe some uh, walking simulators on PS5 will look photorealistic with ray tracing. They could, but Turing cards won't. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, people. It was a tremendous amount of work. Really, please do share this. If you like the points I made, if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing to my youtube channel and ringing the bell button and you know liking the video yada 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 and of course if you support me on patreon more higher quality content will keep coming listen to broken silicon and die shrink people all right thank you everything just works everything just works put it outside and everything just works